In this lesson, we will learn about animation layers, transform keys, and Maya's set key tool. So in this scene, we have Rexy the dinosaur doing Hen Idol. I'll hit play. All right, sweet. Now what we'll do is go ahead and take a look at other ways we can set keyframes in Maya. We'll learn how to set transform keys. We'll also learn about Maya's set key tool. And we'll use an animation layer so we can add on top of the existing animation in a non-destructive way. Let's go ahead and do that first. We'll go to the show menu and show nervous curves. If I were to grab the head control, you can see that we have animation, of course. But the problem is, if we were to try to add any new keyframes, let's go to, let's say, frame 42. I'll grab the rotate tool and just rotate the head to look upward. You'll notice that once we start to scrub through, you'll see that the head will continue to pop because of this new key. And that's simply due to the fact that the animation is cycled. So what we can do to get around this is to use an animation layer, and it is non-destructive, meaning we don't have to tweak any of our existing keys at all. We can just add on top, and if we don't like the changes, it's just a matter of removing the layer. I'll go ahead and right-click on 42 to remove that really nasty key. We'll then go to Maya's Animation Layer tab. From there, we can choose Create Layer from Selection. All right. Once we've done that, it'd be a good idea to rename this layer. I'll just go ahead and double click and name this head underscore offset. Fantastic. Take a look, we have this clean slate to work with now. And we're ready to set a transform key that would allow us to animate rotation. So the hot key to do this is shift E. Let's go to frame one and we'll press shift E. Sweet, so we've just saved rotation keys. Another way is to head over to the Animate menu and take a look. Here we have Set Transform Keys. So we have Translation, Rotation, and Scale. We would use Shift-W for Translation. We know that we would use Shift-E for Rotation, and Shift-R is for Scale. Let's say we go ahead and decide the moment when Rexy should look to... Let's say it's left or right. Let's say we go ahead and have him look screen right. Almost like he has spotted his friend. Now, if I were to go to frame 20 and rotate his head in that direction, I have auto key on, so that should save the pose automatically for us. Let's see what happens when we start back the animation and hit play. You'll notice that Rexy's going to turn his head, and it's no longer going to pop as it did before because we're working on an entirely new layer. How cool. If you find that the timing is a bit too slow, you might consider taking the key on one and maybe delaying that a few more frames just so that we can shorten the distance between this pose and the pose on frame 20. So let's do this. We'll hold down shift and we'll click to grab the key on frame one. We'll now left click and drag over to about frame 10. Now when we hit play, take a look. Rexy's going to look forward for a few frames and then he's going to shift his head. And that timing is a bit more believable, I feel. Sweet. We've also given the audience enough time to see the head turn. If it happens too soon, well then that idea is lost. All right, great. So we've learned how to set transform keys. We've also learned how to work with animation layers. Now I'd like to go ahead and point out the Set Key option box. If we were to go to the Animate menu, take a look, here's the Set Key tool, and we would use S to use it. Let's go to the option box, though, just to take a look at our preferences. So as of right now, with the S key, we would save keyframes on all keyable attributes and all manipulator handles. So that's all transform channels and all keyable attributes. I really enjoy using these when it's time to save an entire pose, just to make sure that nothing is lost in that pose when I'm blocking in animation. But then once I'm ready to start adding more polish, I might go ahead and revert to the transform key tool, or we can just come to the channel box, we've learned this already, we can right click and choose key selected. And then we also have auto key that 
does a great job at only keyframing modified values so we don't have to worry about keyframing every single keyable channel or all manipulated handles at that point. It's just a change in value that it will save. But you have options to adjust how the set key tool works. So let's say if you wanted to key all keyable attributes, you can go ahead and set it to that. And then you get to decide how those keyable attributes get keyed. So right now it's set to all keyable, meaning, again, everything that's keyable will be able to receive a keyframe. But what if we switch to from channel box? Now we're only able to keyframe what we have selected in the channel box. So if I only wanted to keyframe, let's say, the translate Z channel, we could have a look at that. I'll choose set key on frame one and take a look we now have a key there at that moment we might go to let's say frame 15 and then translate the head and the z-axis maybe to move forward just a bit if you need to you can go ahead and grab your your move tool let's go ahead and hold down the W key and the left mouse button to quickly get to the settings of the move tool from there I'll go to axis and choose local just to make sure we know the actual axis that we're animating in. You could also go ahead and double click on the tool here to get to those same options. But I'll now go ahead and translate the head forward on frame 15. So you'll notice that Rexy's going to slowly translate his head forward and then look over to his left, our right. So there you have it. That's basically how the set key options work. Again, you would use this to specify how you would like to create keyframes. We get to keyframe all manipulator handles, if that's only what we want to animate. Or we can animate the current manipulator handle. So whatever we have active, well, that's what's going to receive a keyframe. I like to use the default settings when using the set key tool because it's very convenient. Again, it's a great way to just go in and quickly save a pose. And when you're ready to add finesse, you can start to use auto key, take advantage of that. So you're only keyframing the channels you absolutely need to keep all of your keyframes clean and organized. This will make more sense when we jump into the graph editor shortly. But in this lesson, we've learned about animation layers, super cool. We've also learned about transform keys and Maya's set key tool.